to sort this race out. Caution. Yellow is back on the track. We've got a major crash through the tri-oval. Car on fire coming to the line right here in front of us. It's Ted Musgrave's car, front and rear. And Bonnet's car is also involved in the incident. There are four, five cars that have crashed here in the tri-oval. There is Neil Bonnet's number 31 torn up front and rear. The Musgrave car is torn up. He's told his crew that he is okay. You're in Neil Bonnet's car. After it took a serious hit, you see the crew coming out, some of the safety crew coming out to that car. There's the 55 of Musgrave. Fireman right Johnny on the spot to put that fire out because it was right in the fuel cell area. Lap 131. Bonnet's car lies in the grass just at the bottom of the track as you exit pit road. Neil wow, his car got upside down. And then comes back on the, the uh, wheel as we see Musgrave's car sliding up against the wall. Flames coming from it as he comes across the start finish line. Into the catch fence went the Neil Bonnet car number 31. And you can see the debris, a tremendous amount of it. From inside of Bonnet's car. That's the kind of lick that Neil didn't want to take, but look at him, he's crawling out of it. That's good news. All right. Neil Bonnet, okay. Last race, 1990. A life-threatening crash at that time. He said, I have to come back. I've got to run it one more time. Didn't want the doctors to tell him he had to quit. He wanted to do it on his own. Taking a look back at this car number 31, which is the car that Earnhardt had driven in the Firecracker 400 down at Daytona. Neil looks okay. Let's see here as he walks away. Looks like he has, he, that he's okay. Let's listen and look again. Neil Bonnet's incident. some fence up as the, the, the car got upside down, got up into the retaining fence here. Quite a bit of damage to the fence. The best news of all as he walks away, fence is all torn up, much like that Bobby Allison crash back here in 1987. And there's the Musgrave car, and it appeared in those pictures that you actually saw the Musgrave car up on the 31. Let's look again here. Well, there's the right car up back over right Musgrave. Up over it, yeah. And he gets hit by the, like the 41 car of Phil Parsons. Or maybe, maybe Phil got by and didn't hit him. It looked like he was coming right into it. So when you saw the Musgrave car from those onboard pictures, Bonnet was upside down, headed for the fence at 190. I don't mean to overstress this 190, but things happen so quickly, so dramatically at this track, at these speeds, and they're going to red flag this event Red flag is coming out while they do repairs in this fence area for Neil Bonnet's number 31. A red flag is going to be demonstrated to the field as they come by this time. They'll bring them in in the position they're running. Musgraves, number 55, stove up. He's out of it. Neil Bonnet walks away. Musgrave walks away. That is the best news of all. Apparently, no one up in the grandstand area hurt. We'll wait for any update there is on that story. And Ken, after Bobby Allison's wreck here back in the, the mid-80s, they reinforced this catch, what they call a catch fence, uh, that separates the racetrack from the race fence. 
And thank goodness it has been reinforced because and, it held it. Much and you can see it there, those cables, those cables that run uh, along the parallel to the wall itself have been added over the years, and they certainly did their job here. But there is a red flag on the track. This will come at lap 135. We'll be getting a word from Neil Bonnet in just a moment. After this hair-raising moment at Talladega, Alabama.